الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علی و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد Continue on in our study, uh, basic fiqh, and we were speaking about wudu. These are some of the things that do not break or invalidates a person's wudu because there are shubahat from some of the people, and some of the people take uh, from certain madahib that perhaps in the particular issue have no strong adilla or evidence for their uh, belief and statement. The first thing, ahabatifillah, is touching a woman directly. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, A kiss will not nullify one's wudu, nor will it nullify one's fast. This is in Al-Bazaar. So that lets us know, Habatifillah, that when a man, uh, a man, and he, a married person with their spouse, that if they kiss or they touch, that this does not invalidate their wudu, nor does it break their fast. As long as it is not something with great shahwa and leads to the level of where there's discharge that comes from that uh, interaction. The second thing, ahabatifillah, of the things that do not validate one's wudu is bleeding. Whether it is from a wound, cupping, and whether or not the blood that comes out is a lot or little. Al-Hassan, may Allah be pleased with him, radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, the Muslims continuous, continuously perform pr- 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 uh, prayers and they had wounds. This is in Bukhari. Again, the Muslims continuously perform prayers and they had wounds. Meaning, And there are narrations mentioning uh, Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, ajma'in, who were wounded in battle, who were bleeding, and still praying to Allah showing us that that did not invalidate their wudu. The third non-invalidator of, uh, of uh, wudu is vomit. This will not nullify one's fast since no authentic, ambiguous, unambiguous text uh, verify this. So also vomiting does not uh, uh, invalidates one's fast nor one's prayer, nor one's uh, wudu, sorry. As long as it wasn't done intentionally as far as the fasting uh, in which they they did it uh, intentionally, they forced themselves to vomit. The fourth non-invalidator of wudu is laughing during the prayer. There's no authentic report verifying that laughing during prayer invalidates one's wudu. However, that invalidates one's prayer. The fifth is uh, swearing or cursing. This does not invalidate a person's wudu. However, if a person were to make wudu after that in order to erase hopefully some of those sins of the filthy language they were using or what have you, then this would be something which will be of benefit to their own soul. The sixth thing that does not invalidate a person's uh, wudu, uh, for example, if you are not sure if you passed wind, then the rule is that you haven't unless you hear or smell it. And this is very important. Uh, This is in in accordance with a very important Sharia principle, which is uh, Al-Yaqeen La Yazil Yaqeen Bishak. That Yaqeen or certainty is not removed by something by doubtfulness. And this comes, this principle comes from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu Alayhi said when he was asked about uh, the man who had, uh, was in, in prayer and, and had doubt because this happens to some of us. Some of our brothers and sisters have so much doubt in their prayer they continuously make sajda to saho all the time or they, they're not sure about their actions. We should be have yaqeen. Have yaqeen about what you prayed. Have yaqeen whether you're on wudu or not. So the Prophet ﷺ said about the man during the prayer who had this doubt. He said, لا ينصرف or لا تنصرف حتى تسمع صوتا أو تجد رهن 
The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not leave the prayer unless you have heard something or you smelled something, meaning regarding you passing wind. So it's very important to be on yaqeen in your ibadah. Don't let the shaitan whisper to you. Don't let the waswas come to you. But instead worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala yaqeen and seek forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him for ikhlas wa thabat ala sunnah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.